Yes, we do. Thank you all for coming back. I'm a council. Are we ready to continue this afternoon's summer session? If yes, we are, good afternoon. Proceed. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Um, good afternoon, Commissioners. We are ready to proceed. The witness is on the way coming. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Senghor. Good afternoon. I hope you have lunch. Yes, very well. Are you ready to proceed? Yes. May I kindly remind you that you are still under oath? Yes. And um, just to briefly recap um, the topics that we dealt with in the session, just to remind you, um, we went through the events surrounding April 11, 2000, and the student demonstrations that happened um, in SL yes. um, by your school and the shootings that happened around the Barra area and yes. subsequently um, the injuries that you sustained and your admission at the RVTH um, hospital, the treatment that you received there. You also gave us an account of the different victims that were there and the injuries that they also sustained. You eventually told us that a board, a medical board was convened and it was recommended that you go for overseas treatment and you eventually went to Egypt. And um, just before we uh, broke off during the break, us that um, you told us about what happened when you got to Egypt and the operations that you um, underwent there and the yeah. treatment you received. Is that an accurate um, summary of what happened during the last session? Exactly. Um, you, uh, you finished telling us about what treatment uh, you received, but I would like you to take us through the different treatment that um, the people that you traveled with received, that is Asan Suare, as well as um, Yusuf Ambai. Can you tell us what happened to them? With Yusuf, because he went two weeks before we left for Egypt, Before we arrive, he has already had his first operations there because he developed a bad sock and it was so serious. So when he gets there, that was the first operations <coughs> he was taken to. Like he had a first operation on his bad socks. After that, he had other operations as well. Can you explain what these bed sores were and what kind of operation he had to, um, to, to remedy them? The bed sores will be caused because it was at his back. It was hot around during the time that we were admitted and being stationed at one place without turning so it caused his body to have these bed sores and it was infected and they have to operate him and remove the infected part of that bed sore. Did he receive any other operations? After that he could not no not he could not receive any other operations because the problem is they did not pay full payment for our treatments in Egypt who did not pay the treatment in Egypt the government they they only paid for one month of our treatment in Egypt It was just it was one fine day that the hospital authorities just came in to our ward <coughs> and called the doctor now who was in charge of us that we are discharging your patients because the government that sent them here only paid for 
one month of their treatment and the one month has elapsed so we we will discharge them from the hospital and um, this was before your treatment had been completed did you have any other operations to undergo yes after that I underwent another two or three operations um, tell us um, more about Asan you've told us about Yusuf what operations did Asan undergo or what other treatment did he undergo Actually, with Asan, he did not have any operation in Egypt because he was taking medicines to heal the injuries that he has in his stomach before he could be given any operations also. So before that time, our one month has uh, finished. The payment that they made at the hospital was finished. And what happened after the, the hospital asked you to leave because the funds had um, expired, the funds that the Gambia government had sent? When the doctor who was in charge of us, he tried to negotiate with <coughs> the hospital authorities and he tried communicating with the Gambian authorities here, but he was not getting any positive response from them. Which doctor was this? This is... Dr. Baha is an Egyptian, so he has to make consultations with his family and decided that he will take care of us from his own personal account and he will pay for the extra surgeries that I may need and he will be responsible for all the bills that will cost us staying in that hospital. He has to pay for another two months that we spent in that hospital. Do you know what kind of funds he, he paid for these two months treatment? We were foreign, foreign, foreign patients. It's obvious we will pay. It was not free. It was a private hospital. And I have other two or three surgeries. <coughs> in Egypt, when your patient, when you, if you are taking a patient for theater, for operations, you have to register and then they will charge you the cost of the operation that you want to undergo or underwent at the hospital there. And um would it be right to say that the treatment was um, expensive? Yes, it, w it was expensive. And why would he do something like this? Why would he um, make that undertaking to pay these expenses on your behalf? He knew you from nowhere. You went from the same country. Why did he decide to do this? He said he has kids. He has two kids. Um, he will just see us as his, his kids. His, his old boy, his boy was almost our age. He was 17 as us. So he used to come with him every day to the hospital. So Ahmed was so close to us after he can, he even come there alone. At times when he comes to the hospital, if it's not school days, he can be there up to 3 a.m. in the night and then he will get back home. So with that, we come, we get close to the family. So when he talks to his family, that is his kids, of course, and the wife, he decided that he will take responsible of the remaining of our medical treatments there. And that was not just yours, but also the others? Yeah, with Hassan and Yusufa. And what would have happened if he did not decide to um, pay for your medical treatment? It could have been another story. At least I am using crutches to work uh, to support myself. But if he did not stay that two months extra, it could have been a different story. Especially with <coughs> Yusufa, who was totally unable to do things on his own. At times, it, it was so difficult with us there because sometimes Yusufa will need help 
if he calls the nurse room before they respond it has to take time so normally Hassan would would go to his room even though he would be limping holding his stomach but he will force to do it at least to help Yusufa turn on the other side like if he lies on one side and wanted to turn to the other side sometimes when he calls the nurses before they respond it takes it takes time <laughs> they don't care that much even though he has his own personal nurse who was taking care of her every day so after he decided to take on your medical um, treatment can you tell us what happened afterwards what operations or treatment did each of you receive I had another operation my fracture was fixed with an external fixation mm. can you just explain what that means I, I just know it as external fixation instead of putting the metal inside your body it will be placed outside it will have screws that will hold it representing like representing the bone from outside instead of being put inside and then I have to go back to the theater because my first operation had some infections and it was needed to be fixed the it require it requires a how to call it a plastic surgery doctor to conduct that operation because they did skin grafting so that they could cover the wound that was infected. And which part of your leg was this wound? The same right leg that was shot. And which, which part of the leg? The toes. And um, did the others receive any other treatments or operations? With Asan, he was just taking um, medicines because his condition was improving a little bit. What about but you, at, at some point, Dr. Baha decided that he too, he was running out of funds from his own personal accounts that he could only stop at that level. So that was the reason why Yusufa could not have his other operations. And, and I, I had my angiogram scans there which he financed. Can you explain what these angiogram scans were? This, it requires a scan that could detect your blood vessels and how it works. They did this scanning to see whether the vascular doctor's uh, surgery was successful also. That was why it requires to have another angiogram scan. And was it uh, successful, the operation that was done? Yeah, it was successful. Yeah. And um, what, what happened in the end? You just started um, describing. During that, that, sorry, during that second operation, when I, when I was taken to the theater, I spent another five hours there just to fix those problems. And after the two months that, um, when the two months expired, the two months that were paid for, what, what happened after that? Uh, Dr. Baha will come to us and tell us he has done all that he could, even though he wanted to do more, but the possibilities are not there. He would ask the government to send us an, our air tickets. The sad part is when he talks of air tickets for us to go back home, they did that immediately. But when he consulted them for money because they paid only for one month, they never responded to his calls. So they were eager for you guys to go back, back home to Gambia? Yes, exactly.
Apart from um, Dr. Badha, did any other person uh, um, assist you financially whilst you were in Egypt? Yes. It will be this concerned Gambian group that I talked about during our first session. That is SIGA and their group. They will sometimes send us money through Dr. Baha to give it to us that we will be using for, for our personal things. And at some time they attended Dr. Baha if he can keep us for another one month so they could try and see if they can find any other hospital somewhere in Europe or America so we can be evacuated from there. But it was not possible. He too, he did not want to take the risks because this was between the two governments. It was diplomacy. So he said he cannot take that risk, allowing us to be evacuated from Egypt to another country, which is not his responsibility. So you had to return to Gambia first before any of that possibility was explored? Yes. Okay. And um, considering your age at the time, I mean, you were abandoned by the government and um, you did not have your family members there with you. I mean, how, how did that make you feel? How did you cope? It, with, with the situation during those months that you were in Egypt? It was challenging. We feel really bad. <coughs> but at some point, we have to say to ourselves, we just have to take it. And because this is the situation and we cannot change it. The only thing that we can do is bear it and take anything that comes our way. So did you eventually leave Egypt? Yes, we, we left. They sent us our air tickets and Dr. Baha has to take us out and make shoppings for us by some clothes. Actually, he was treating us like, like he was our father there. I could see his own father was taking us uh, uh, Quranic sections, Dara. That would be from 7 o'clock to 9 in the evening. We have two ustas that will come and teach us Quranic. He provided us with um, a first ustas who will come after we prayed 5 o'clock prayers. He will come from 5 to half past 6 and the man will go because his father was a little bit old so he could come just after Mahri prayer, prayers he will come from 7 to 9 so he take us as his own kids so he took you to the airport and um, what happened at the airport when he took us to the airport he left we get to the terminal the immigrations the immigrations have to take our passports and said we have to pay each an a hundred dollar or if not we are not boarding the plane when we asked they said that was the immigration rules there we were lucky that SIGA sent us money I think it was something like five hundred dollars Oh, it will be 400 so they said we will pay each a hundred dollar when we talked to them they refused and it was time to board so we decided to take 300 out of that 400 we paid to them they, they didn't give us any receipt just we just paid the money and our passports were given back to us so we bought the plane. And unlike um, when you were coming from the Gambia, um, did you have any did you have any escort when you were going back? No, we came alone. Only me, Asan, and Yusufa. And you had no other assistance from anyone. No. Yeah, kindly tell us what happened after you boarded the flight. After we boarded the flight, because we had a transit in Belgium. 
there too, because the transit was supposed to be like 11 hours. So we arrived there in the late evening. So obviously we'll spend the night there. We were told we didn't have visas to go in town, so we'll just spend the night at the terminal there outside. It wouldn't be a problem for me at the time on Asan, but with Yusufa to sit on a wheelchair for 11 hours was so challenging and it was so crazy. We tried to find a place where we can make calls. We tried to contact Siga. She has to wake up I think it will be around 2 a.m., 3 a.m., make calls to get in touch with the Gambian embassy who was in Belgium. He for, she, for, she gave us his number, the embassy number, and we called there. The ambassador at the time, when we called, after some time, he came to the airport. We shared together because in and the tickets it covers our food for us. So we went to the restaurant with him and have dinner. After that, he spent some time with us. Then he left. He left for his house and promised to come back the following morning before we depart which he did. I don't know his name. Since then, I, I tried to find out, but I couldn't find him. You mentioned how hard the journey was on um, Yusufa, but um, wouldn't you agree that, I mean, you had also just undergone um, several operations. Um, had you fully recovered at that stage? No, I was not fully recovered, but at least even it would if I can move from here to your desk, it was much better than someone who was just stationed in one place and cannot even do anything for himself. What about um, Asan? Had he fully recovered? No, he was not fully recovered. But he was much better. He was at least he was the one making the calls and trying to get in touch with the embassy and, and his um, sister. Yeah. And Yusufa, who was pushing his wheelchair? Yes, at the airport, Hassan was pushing him. But when we were to board the plane, he was being helped and he was pushed. Did you eventually arrive in the Gambia? Yes. And what happened? We arrived here, that would be around 7 o'clock in the evening. It was even raining. When we get out of the aircraft, we saw an ambulance standing just at the foot of the aircraft. The hospital authorities were there. What they first did was they take our passports and the medical reports that we get from Egypt. They went through the immigration processing system with our passports. We were asked to board the ambulance. <coughs> I was told that you are going back to the hospital. We will be admitted again. Yusufa too is going back to the hospital. But I declined that. I said, no, I am not going. When they asked why, I said, you already know we, we did not recover and you, you cannot do anything about it now. You want us to get back to the hospital and be readmitted. I will prefer staying at home. They tried to convince me, saying, you will be given a private block, you will be fine there. 
I said no, I am not going. Why do you think the government wanted to readmit you back um, to RVTH, considering the fact that a medical board had been convened and recommendations were made that um, you should have overseas treatment? And that acknowledged the fact that obviously the, Gambian, um, the Gambians were not able to provide the medical care that you, you needed. They knew we did not recover well because the doctor will include that in his report and he will explain to them why he decided to pay for on his own because we needed that operations and all that will take during after the second two months that we've been there i know that was the reason why they said we are going back to the hospital but i said no so what happened after that Hassan too went home but with yusufa he was taken back to the hospital and readmitted there. I know if he comes, he will say something. Yusufa, oh my God. He spent almost three years in hospital. More than three years. And um, what happened um, after you, you told them that you were not going to be admitted? Did you go back home? Yes, I, I went back home. I was asked to report at the hospital, I think it was the following day or two days after, which I did. So they said now I will be having physiotherapy there every um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And they will provide me with an ambulance that will be picking me up from home to the hospital. I did it for some time and said I am no more going because I felt it was wasting my time and there was no much improvement so I decided not to go for the physiotherapy again. What was the physiotherapy uh, treatment for? Because then my knee was, was not bending completely so have to go having physiotherapy and then it was after five months I started using crutches it was so difficult so I will go there practicing on how to use the crutches very well and the like. And before the crutches I mean how were you able to, to move? Actually, I came with the crutches from Egypt. I was even using it, but that was what they said. You need this, you need to be coming for the physio so that you, you will know how to use your crutches and, and the like. I, I said to them, I've been using these crutches almost two weeks before we came. So the treatment had no benefit as far as you were concerned? I would not say it, it did not have any benefit. The therapy, at least, it helps with the knee. But after all, that was it. Did you receive any other treatment? No, unless I was readmitted at some point because the external fixation in my leg, already the bone has healed and it was supposed to be removed. So. I have to be taken back to the theater again and under anesthetic and it was removed. <sighs> and after this um, time that you came back from Egypt and went back into treatment um, at RVH, um, was there any talk of um, compensating you for the, su the suffering that um, you know you had gone through? Not from the government, but it was from the Commission of Enquiries. In their report, they recommended all those that you mentioned that they needed compensation, they needed further treatment, the perpetrators were to be brought to justice, but nothing eventually happened. And um, eventually, did you receive any other further treatment from anywhere? No, not. What about uh, abroad? 
did anything happen? I brought, at some point, the same Gambians that are in Egypt, they decided that as far as this government are not doing anything, they will take it upon themselves. So they have to move us from here, and we were taken to Senegal. We've been there for some time. We go to the hospital so they could make an assessment on us, and they recommended that we needed further treatment which I have reports of, including the report that SIGA managed to get from Egypt. With the report that we get from Egypt, from the aircraft we could not see it again. When we asked about it, we were told, you see your, country, your situation is political and your reports were being taken from the hospital and is at the office of the president. So since then, we did not see it. Um, but you said you managed to get a copy of the report from Egypt, the medical report, eventually through Sega Jain. Yes. Do you have a copy of that medical report? Yeah, I think I will have. Can you read out the dates on the report? And tell us um, just briefly what the report is about. Um, it will say diagnosis at, an, at admission. Infected gangrix of tooth of the art foot. Infected wounds at upper half of the leg. Open fracture. Femur multiple abdominal infected nuclear over the cellulose. Stiff knees and equine deformity of the feet. This was a list of the injuries yes. um, and, and symptoms that you had. Yeah. What, what uh, date is on that medical report? This would be 30th of August 2000. Mr. Chairman, um, we would like to include the medical report from Cairo, Egypt, as part of the yeah, record Cairo, Aguza, yeah. as 0072C. Request granted. Thank you. Mr. Osher, can you kindly um, show the report to the commissioners? You have another report with you, is that correct? Yes, I have extra two reports that we get from Senegal. Okay. When they, we were, when they wanted to help us get for the treatment. Yeah. Kindly um, tell us what the first report you have is in your hand and the date. This is from Gryoff Hospital, General Gryoff Hospital. It was September 4, 2014. And this is in Dakar, Senegal? Yeah, it's in Dakar, Senegal. Okay, and what is the report about? You don't have to read it, just tell us briefly what it's about. Medical report on CNE. It's because they, they said I, we needed further medical treatment and then so the report was just listing out your injuries yes, and um, recommending yeah, for the treatment yes, overseas. exactly. Thank you. Mr. Uh -huh. Chairman, we would also like to include um, the report um, from Dakar, Senegal, which the witness has just mentioned as 0072D. Uh, request also granted. Thank you. Mr. Osha, kindly show the commissioners the report. Do you have another report with you? Oh, I already gave him the... All Mr. Asher, can you kindly yes. return? Yeah, exactly. <coughs> can you tell us what that report is in your hand? This one, too, is a medical report from Senegal. We got this from Dantec Hospital. And um, what is it dated? This one is dated on... Uh, 11th July 2014. And that is when you went to Senegal in 2014? Yes, exactly. To obtain these re medical reports? Yes. And what is this report saying? It's the same as the first one. We needed medical surgeries and all other stuff that are in it. Mr. Chairman, we would also like to include this uh, medical report from the Dante Clinic in Dakar, Senegal as Exhibit 00. 72E. Request granted. Thank you.
Can we kindly, um, can we continue, Mr. Chairman, whilst the commissioners look at the reports? Can we continue with the testimony? Whilst the commissioners look at the documents? No, we would like to continue with the testimony. Okay. And so the report from Egypt, I don't know if there is a page missing, but uh, it's not, it doesn't have any signature on it. Okay. I will you may consult. Want to check that. I will consult with the witness and then we will provide the missing page to you after the proceedings. Splendid. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Senghor, um, kindly tell us what happened after you obtained all of these medical reports from, from Senegal. What was the purpose of getting the reports? The purpose was these people wanted to <coughs> help us get uh, another hospital, a much sophisticated one where we can still go and check on our conditions and see if it can be improved from there. You're talking about Siga Jain's group? Yes, exactly. Okay. And what happened? They've tried everything, but it was so difficult from there. So after some time, especially when the regime changed, they decided that we can we can still continue it from here and see if there could be any possibility for us to be helped and taken out of here. And were you on your own when you went to Dakar or you went with some other people? Oh, I was there with Yusufa Abdukarim and obviously Ali because he will be with us to help you take care of you so far. And this is Ali, your brother? Yes, my brother, yes. And how long did you spend in Dakar? Almost three years. What were you doing during these three years? That's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. They were working, trying to find a hospital, raising funds, but it was so difficult with them even though they were paying our accommodations and food and all other stuff. And um, did they get any assistance for, from the government? Gambia here? Yes. No. So what, to my knowledge. what eventually happened? Yeah, after that, when things changed, they come, we came back. And since then, we have been pushing. At some point, we've managed to meet with the Turkish embassy, who said he would help us get treatment in Egypt for free, provided that the government will pay our air tickets to Egypt, which we make follow-ups. But since then, that could not materialize. So the government was not interested in assisting you to get further treatment? It was only Port's Authority that said they, will, they could help provide with one or um, two or three tickets. And did you take them up on their offer? Yes, we did. It was not directly through us. It went through the Minister of Health, of course not through the Minister of Youth and Sports and Minister of Health, but since then, nothing has come out of that package. So you did not end up going to Turkey? No. And why was that? Because the government said they could not provide uh, tickets for us. And they did not take up the offer from Ports Authority either? That was not sufficient to provide to airlift us to Egypt, they needed extra funds, which the government never did. So to date, uh, Mr. Sengor, you still have not received the extra treatment which um, you need and which was actually recommended by the medical board here in the Gambia? Yes, especially for Yusufa. I know you're very um, passionate about Yusufa, but I was referring to, to you. 
Yeah, with me, at least I can, I can do things on my own. I can go from one place to another. So, at least I feel a little bit much better. But with Yusufa, you look at his conditions. You see him where he is, and it's not something natural in him. It was, it was somebody who was supposed to protect him who did that to him. So. It's just crazy. And your plight is the same as Yusufa's. I mean, no, nothing has been done about his condition. No further treatment, no compensation, nothing from the government. No, with Yusufa, after he was readmitted, I know if he appears, he will, he will, he will elaborate more on that. He was taken to Scotland, but that was just a formality because he spent just only one week there and he was sent back again. Like in Egypt, the same problem. Your government did not pay for your treatment, and he has to be returned back to the Gambia. So, and of course, like you said, um, the indemnity bill was passed, and um, none of the perpetrators um, that 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 um, meted out the, the the injuries that you had on you, none of them were prosecuted. No. And to date, no one has been tried or prosecuted. For, no. for, for what happened to you? No. And what about your education? I mean, after, you, after the incident of 11th April 2000, what happened to your education? Did you have an opportunity to complete? No, um, I did not have an opportunity com to complete. And since then, this is exactly <coughs> what I really wanted to, because I felt I was shot but I believe it's not the end of my life. I can still go on. And why have you not been able to complete your education? See, I have these family difficulties. And at some point, it's not easy. And have you been able to gain employment? No. No. So you're currently unemployed? Yes. And how are you, how, how do you live? How do you sustain yourself? I am just content with what I have, be it myself and believe in God. That's it. But financially, how, how are you able to get by? Do you have assistance from anyone? Mm, not exactly, but I would say with family, family and friends. Family and friends are taking care of you. Yeah, well, but you don't want to be a dependent for the rest of your life. I don't think nobody is praised for that. Just to be a liability like that, I don't think. So you would like to go back and get an education so that you can yeah. have an income to provide for yourself? Get an education, have a job. Are you married? I, I want to take care of my family too. I want to take care of my mother, my siblings. Still I will. I have that hope and belief. Are you married? Do you have any children? No, I am not. Can you tell us, uh, just in summary, how this whole experience um, has affected you? I know that you've touched on, on the impact that it, it has had, but just in brief, to conclude, just mm -hmm. tell us you know, how this whole incident has actually um, impacted on your life and the life of your family. So generally it has a negative impact on my life because I have my dreams, I have my objective, I have my goals, but someone else out there decided that he will not fulfill it because his main intention was to kill me. Thank God I survived it.
but still I have the belief I can get out of the situation that I am in. And your situation, how has it impacted um, on the life of your family? It has affected us a lot. But day to day, they were so strong during the course. They believe in God. They will encourage me. They will do everything possible to see I feel okay. I don't know how to say thank you to them, but I really appreciate everything that they did for me. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Witness. That is all for your testimony today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I hand you over to the witness for any questions you may have, and finally, back to him for any final words. <coughs> thank you very much, Mr. Council, and thank you very much, Mr. Singer, for your testimony. You have um, a tremendous um, resilience and fortitude, which you had endured. Uh, it's extraordinary. Thank I you. hope um, uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, just one quick question. When the Commission of Inquiry um, made its uh, report, did uh, any um, aspect of the recommendations, was any recommendation implemented at all? Yes, there were there are recommendations that were put in place. That is, they've talked about compensation in it. They've talked about to take care of the victims that are affected directly, to have either medical treatment or going back to school if they wish. And then they've talked about the perpetrators being brought to justice too. Not a single one was no. implemented? No, not a single one was implemented. No compensation at all? No compensation. It's been 19 years we've been crying, but thank God a day like this has arrived. Extraordinary. Commission, do you have any questions? Yeah, uh, Deputy Chair, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Sini. If you have an opportunity to study, what would you like to study? I have a dream of studying law or engineering. Yeah. Thank you. We'll Thank talk later. Thank you. Doesn't seem to be. Oh, <coughs> uh, Commissioner Imam Jalo, you have the floor, please. Have you completed secondary education? No. Huh? No. Would you like to go back to a secondary school? That at this time, I would like to go back to school anyway. You want to go back to senior secondary school? That's yes, my question. No, I think. Because that's the only way you can make your O levels to get to university or to any institution of higher learning. I just did my O and A levels when I was 26 years of age. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so would like to go back to school. Huh? I said I would like to go back to school. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's never too late to go back to school. Yeah. You can always, uh, you can even have gray hair and still go to primary six. Okay. Um, if you have any concluding remarks, uh, <coughs> Mr. Singh, uh, please uh, proceed uh, to make them now. Yeah, okay. 10th and April 11, 2017, were days that renewed my faith and trust in society. A historic day we were marching in solidarity with students, members of the executive, legislature, diplomatic corps, civil society, and when well meaning full Gambians. We marched behind a banner, we marched behind a never again banner. I believe those two words. What we did in April 2000 was morally right. And I would go out and do the same thing today if I were a student and the same circumstances were repeated. Why were we out protesting? A female student was raped by our men in uniform. A male student was badly beaten, resulting to his death by our men in uniform. 
I will register my protest against brutality because as, as kids, we were taught that Lubon Bahut. As kids, you are told that you are the future. As kids, one has ambitions and aspirations. As kids, one feels secure and safe in their environment, be it school, our neighbors, neighborhoods, community, etc. What they did to us robbed me of that sense of security, a better future and reduce my adolescent life to looking forward to almost nothing. What they could not do was take away my determination, our determination to fight on despite huge challenges. We were abandoned by our government that unleashed that pain on us and by a section of society who looked at the other way, some, some out of fear and the others because it was convenient. What can we learn from our situation? When you see an injustice, denounce it. When you see the vulnerable being abused, do something about it. Our men in uniform are our first line of defense. You should have been protecting us, the most vulnerable stakeholders in society. Instead, I sit here with my future almost stolen from me, and it's not in making a blame bit of difference. Yes, we received the physical bullets, and your pain, lose lives, compromise features, but as a nation, entire generation has an un unprecedented run of talent, ammunition, rain on their psychological being, an entire student population growing up in fear, our free spirit curtailed and some went as far as being groomed into psychopancy. For in 2017, we were offered treatment to Turkey. Once again, our hopes raised only to be dust, as our government said they could not afford the air tickets. Hopes being dust has become a recurring theme in our lives for 19 years. My recommendations are, for civil education be taught in schools from basic education and this extended to radio and TV programs across the country. As victims of April 10th, 11th, we submitted a petition to the Attorney General and still waiting for an official response to the demands we made on, the, on that petition. I wish to tender a copy to the TRRC. To our men in uniform, defending the Gambia should never be a compromise. Please let's stop being bystanders. When the vulnerable are attacked, to all those who stood by us, I cannot thank you enough. You know who you are. Thank you. However, if I can be allowed to mention just one person, Koto Sol, thank you. I mean Uncle Sol. To the chair, councils, and the entire personnel of the TRRC, please help us to ensure never again does not become a gimmick. Finally, to the cowards who shoot at us, innocent students and a Red Cross volunteer, to Yaya Jame, the former president of the Gambia and his entire executive. To the entire security apparatus, we are stronger today than we were on April 10th, 11, 2000. We might have our dreams shattered. We are proud to do done what was right. Let no one take that away from us. We were and are still dictated by our moral concerns. Babu Karbaji. Karamu Baru, Lamin Bujang, Ibrahim Abari, 
Regina Carol, Modla Minchun, Bamba Jobate, Uyefude Masari, Bakari Njai, Modla Minjai, Sini Nyabali, Usman Sabali, Abdullah Sanyang, Usman Sembende, Kalesko Pereira, Omar Baru, Red Cross Volunteer, Rest in Peace. I am so proud to be associated with you. I will continue to fight for justice. Your lives will never be in vain. I thank you all. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, Mr. Senghor, um, uh, for that. Uh, those very, very kind words and the very wise um, uh, remarks that you made. Uh, can we, Council, have this uh, statement as part of the record, please? Can you confirm that, please? Yes, I will um, retrieve the petition from the witness, and then we will have um, we'll have it tendered in a closed session of the TRRC. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Mr. Singar, for coming to testify uh, before the commission. We will resume our proceedings tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Thank you all very much, and the meeting is adjourned.